Your weekly UAS news update comes out the week of February. We're going to talk about a flying catalog. Four topics this week. This week we're going to talk about the last week. Hi folks, welcome to the end of the year. And as always, what we're gonna do is a recap of everything we've talked about this year. The first one is we're gonna talk about all the new drones that came out because we all know that 2021 was the year of the new drone. We'll also talk about drone bans because, well, there were quite a few, uh, especially for DJI and then now even for Hotel, this is a new one that we'll talk about. We also will talk about some regulation changes because the FAA hit us with different things on the Part 107 side of things and also on the recreational side of things. We'll talk about UAS and public safety. And then lastly, we'll talk about some things that we've done at Pilot Institute because, well, we've been quite busy this year. So let's get to it. All right. Well. The first story, let's talk about all the new drones that we get this year because, well, we get quite a few. And uh, it started with DJI, obviously. Uh, DJI kind of made a, a big deal out of uh, the Air 2S. It feels like the Air 2S was forever ago, but no, it was actually this year. Uh, they also came up with a Mini SE, which was kind of a surprise, not expected to be in the US, but it ended up being here. And obviously the Mavic 3 was the big release this year. Uh, still not uh, fully ready, I think. It's missing a, a, a few updates, maybe just one update to get to the level where it's supposed to be. Uh, the DJI FPV was also a drone that we saw this year from DJI. Again, feels like this was forever ago, but no, this was actually in 2021. And then the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced was another drone that they came up with. Uh, Hotel was also releasing quite a few drones this year. First off, the Dragonfish, which we uh, were lucky enough to see when we were in Texas. And uh, they announced the Nano and the Evo uh, drones, that are, the Evo Lite, I'm sorry, drones that are supposed to be uh, coming out in a few weeks. I know they, really, they received a bunch of them. I know we're going to see them in uh, CES next week. So we're pretty excited about this. Now, the other brands that we saw, there was uh, a bunch of drones from different brands as well. Not as prolific as DJI and Hotel, but we saw the drone out very recently. Uh, we talked about the Parrot NFE AI, which was the first drone to fly with a 5G connection. Hubsan came up with the uh, Z Zeno Mini, Zeno Mini Pro and the SE as well. Uh, we saw EB with a tactical. Sony released the Air Peak. We haven't really seen that fly just yet, but that should be coming out very soon. And then, of course, on Mars, we had the Ingenuity uh, helicopter, which was really a UAS. And then this very, very large drone called the Scorpion XL. And then Skydio came up with uh, two things, really the X2, which was their uh, most recent drone, and then the 3D scan, which was more of a software than anything else, but still. And then lastly, we saw the Blue UAS and then the new version of the Blue UAS, which is Blue UAS 2.0, which uh, we don't have a whole ton of information just yet because these drones are still being uh, produced, but I'm sure we'll see more of that in 2022. And of course, the next story, we kind of try to put this into one big story, which was drone bans and specifically drone bans for DJI. Uh, back in June, we saw the Pentagon reporting that they had cleared two DJI drones, the Mavic Pro and the Matrice 600. And then soon after that, the uh, DOD released a statement uh, reaffirming that DJI was still banned uh, from being used in the government. Uh, and then in September, we saw the Secret Service that were secretly buying DJI drones. And then in October, the FCC commissioner kind of added on uh, to this calling for a DJI ban, which did not happen at the time, but that was kind of uh, probably the scariest of all of these right here, if that ever happened. And then back in December this year, uh, we saw DJI being put on that blacklist for in terms of investment. So uh, a lot added on to DJI to what happened in 2020. So in 2021, even more stuff uh, to try to, uh, to either slow down DJI or, or get people to not fly DJI. And then the latest, which we haven't talked about yet because this happened this week, this is in Florida. Uh, Florida effectively put a ban on two types of drone, DJI drones and hotel drones. And they're basically telling that anybody in the public sector, uh, pu public safety sector, cannot use uh, flo uh, drones in Florida that are from DJI and from hotels. So I'm sure there will be more information about this. There's been a lot of buzz. This kind of was released this morning as we were recording this. And, uh, and I'm sure there will be more information resurfacing. Uh, the location on the website where this was posted on the Florida website uh, was actually put behind a login wall so that people can't access that information, which I think is very shady in a way. But... Uh, Again, well, this is Florida. So, all right, let's move on to the next story. And uh, we are talking about regulation changes because a lot of this happened during the week. The first one being uh, in April, we got new regulation that went live. We're talking about night operation. We're talking about currency, new currency rules and operation over people. We made a full video that you can uh, find in the link right here or down here as well. 
that explains all of these changes. Uh, if you're not familiar, definitely a good, new, a good thing to be familiar with uh, so you don't miss on any of this new stuff. And then in June, the FAA came up with trust after so long of promising that there would be a test for recreational pilot. The FAA came up with it. Uh, the good news is we are a provider, not only a provider, we're actually number one provider in the country at the moment. And uh, you can take your trust exam for free at trust.fa, at <laughs> trust.pilotinstitute.com. And um, there it's free. It takes about 30 minutes. You can't fail it. It's a one-time deal, and it's actually required if you fly for recreational purposes. Then uh, more regulation is around the corner, not really necessarily regulation, but this is more an, an advisory circular uh, from the FAA 9157 Charlie. Uh, they ask people to leave comments uh, back in July, and now we're expecting this to come out soon, I hope, so we can have more guidance on how CBOs are going to get picked. So uh, I think this would be a big news for 2022, unless the FAA does what they do every year, which is right around Christmas, and uh, they start releasing a bunch of uh, new regulation and and, uh, and then we're uh, spending the, the end of the year looking at it and reporting on it. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, we, we see this early, in the, uh, early January. We had uh, nighttime information for Lance uh, in August. So Part 107 can now fly at night using the Lance system. Recreational pilots still have to wait for that to come around. Uh, the system is not set up for that. And then uh, very recently, I think this was last week that we reported on this, uh, operation over people and the first accepted uh, means of compliance, which is uh, opening the door hopefully in 2022 for uh, new drones with category, category two or category three. So we'll see what happens there. Then the next segment is UAS in public safety. There was also quite a few things that happened uh, in 2021. Uh, we had the Surfside Collide where we saw public safety using drones to do a lot of different things and, and helping to save lives. Uh, we saw people uh, using drones with tornadoes uh, and, and hurricanes, Hurricane Ida specifically. We saw our friends at Skybrass coming up with new software to help uh, public safety uh, users of drones and, uh, and helping them map very quickly a specific area and get information creating automated reports as well. And then, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we saw the ban for DJI and hotel drones very recently in the last couple days uh, in Florida. So not really such a good news at this level. And then we had some miscellaneous news that I didn't really know how to categorize, but I think they were important. Uh, one of them was Brendan Schulman from DJI who decided to leave and go to Boston Dynamics. Uh, we still miss him. And then uh, drones that were being shot out of the sky. And that's kind of the, uh, the don't be that guy segment, right? Um, Quite a few of them. I know Vic from the DSP, the Drone Service Provider Alliance, has been very involved with these and uh, trying to collect a list so that we can uh, talk to the FA and tell them that this is not acceptable and that they need to be doing something, especially in light of the remote ID regulation around the corner. And then the last thing is in 2021, we had a ton of things from Pilot Institute, uh, new courses, and this is only uh, the new courses that we created this year alone. We created uh, obviously a course for trust. Uh, we created the uh, FA safety courses, which you can get for free on fasafety.gov. We had a bunch of deep dives for the Air 2S, for the uh, DJI FPV, the Parrot NFE Thermal, Parrot NFE USA. Uh, we created a course on NIST to help you fly the NIST lanes. We made a course for public safety on how to do COA, uh, Certificate of Authorization. And we made a course for free called Recreational Flying Made Easy to help people that are starting in this uh, to learn how to fly and how to fly safely. And then we also had a night training module for Part 107 pilots. So we've been quite busy actually creating these courses, pretty excited. We actually have a ton of new courses that are also going to be uh, created next year, and I'll talk about that in a second. But uh, we went to a bunch of events as well. We were in Texas for the Public Safety Response Summit in 2021. Uh, we didn't go to Flight Fest, but I wanted to mention Flight Fest from our friends, our friends at Flight Test. Uh, we will be there next year. Uh, this year, actually, uh, get uh, a baby <laughs> with my wife right around the time of Flight Fest, so couldn't travel at that time. And then uh, we went to Commercial UAV Expo. Uh, we sponsored the Colorado UAS Roundup, which was a great event from what I've been told. We sponsored an AUVSI uh, event in Washington. Uh, we were at the FAA Symposium. I actually spoke at the FAA Symposium. Uh, we went to AZ Drone Fest down in Phoenix here in our local area. 
And then uh, next year, we're going to be busy as well. We're going to be going to CES next week. Uh, we'll be uh, sponsoring the South Florida Meetup, which is with Captain Ray Kelly and his team. We're really excited about this. We're going to try to make an appearance, but I can't promise it at this stage because I may have a conflicting event at the same time. Uh, we are going to go back to Texas for the Public Safety Response Summit. Uh, we're actually going to be sponsoring that as well and having an event there with, uh, well, for folks. More information on that very soon. And then we'll be going to Flight Fest and then the Commercial UAV Expo and probably CES again uh, in 2023. So um, some of the milestones that we accomplished, and this is all thanks to you guys, quite frankly, and, and not only for, uh, for YouTube, but for all of the support that we get from the community. Uh, number one test provider in the country. This is uh, from an FA email that we got a couple weeks ago. Uh, we are the number one provider, provided the most uh, trust certificates. Uh, we got IACET approved, which means that you can get uh, credits, continuing education credits with our courses, and we're actually the only provider in the country that provides this at the moment. Uh, we got uh, two new sets for News Update. We actually started the year doing a green screen in the old place, and then we switched to a more cozy environment, and then now this studio, uh, which was kind of a big move, obviously moving in here with five different sets, much more space for our employees. And of course, this allowed us to hire new employees to put them in the new building. So we uh, welcome Jason as the first employee who came in to help us with the UAS content. And uh, Ethan is our new producer, we also brought in Ashley to help with airplane content and then Taylor also helping with uh, uh, UAS stuff. So really, really exciting to bring all these people on board. And, uh, and of course, we met a big, um, some big numbers this year. 30,000 followers on YouTube, uh, 125,000 students, which is just... Uh, just incredible to me. Uh, 35,000 remote pilots trained this year, uh, 45,000 trust certificates, and then we just finished printing 6,000 stickers uh, that we are sending for free to you guys to put on your drone. So that's uh, something that we're all very, very proud of. So uh, what's coming up in 2022? Uh, we have a bunch of deep dives coming up. We have a Mavic 3 deep dive. We've been waiting for this. You may be wondering where our review is. Uh, well, we've been waiting to get the final software updates for that before we start recording uh, big in the studio. So uh, we also have a bunch of hotel deep dives that are coming up. So we'll have uh, a uh, Evo 2 a deep dive coming out right around the corner that's been recorded, that's being edited at the moment. And of course, these two new drones from hotel that are coming up. And, uh, and there's going to be many more courses as well that we have on our list, but I can't really talk about these just yet. So that's all I have. I want to thank you for a great year. I look forward to 2022. Uh, I hope all of you have a great uh, Happy New Year, uh, a great celebration, and, uh, and we'll see you guys next year nice and fresh. So see you then.